President Nangagwa yesterday gave young women the carte blanche to seize vast opportunities that have been brought by the Second Republic as he promised to give them loans and open the doors for participation in any sector of the economy. Inclusive participation leading to development that leaves no one and no place behind has been the centerpiece of the Second Republic under President Nangagwa, and this was on display yesterday as young women, under the banner, Young Women for Economic Development, converged in Harare to exhibit their businesses that have bloomed since the dawn of the new dispensation. Speaking at the Young Women for Ed Business Convention in the capital, the president saluted women for their resilience in the face of the Western-imposed economic sanctions, weather vagaries, and the COVID-19 pandemic. My administration stands proud of all the women of our great country who continue to push hard to help create a better quality of life for our people. We celebrate you as women homemakers, entrepreneurs, professionals, and world changers in your various categories," said President Nangagwa. Today, we also take note of the milestones made by enterprising women, as well as the ingenuity of the young people who are working hard, innovating, and adapting towards reaching their full potential for the ultimate prosperity of our motherland. Your role in our nation's quest to modernize, industrialize and realize the sustainable growth of our economy is invaluable. Brest assured that the Second Republic will continue to avail broad, inclusive opportunities and support to you all. Dot regardless of setbacks, President Nangagwa said the country, women in particular, should focus on what is available to develop the country, ever embracing the values of hard honest work and patriotism, as well as the importance of praying and interceding for our great country. This, he said, must remain the solid foundation upon which we build our beloved Zimbabwe, brick by brick, stone upon stone. The Young Women for Ed that was formed last year has spread across the country and yesterday its delegates filled the Harare Sports Center during a ceremony marked by pomp and fanfare. The occasion was graced by Vice President Chuenka, Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services Minister Monica Mitsvangwa, Women's Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Minister Sithambis Onioni, Industry, and Commerce Minister Sekine Zenza, Youth, Sport, Arts, and Recreation Minister Kirsty Coventry, Senate President Mabel Chinamona, senior government officials and captains of industry, the president, who promised to review upwards allocations to the Empowerment Bank to ensure that more women participate in the development of the country, said young women should draw inspiration from the country's heroines such as Mbayana Honda. Throughout the history of our great country, Women have always played critical roles in the socio-economic and political architecture of our motherland, albeit in varying forms. The fact that this historic convention is being held on the eve of April during which we commemorate independence and freedom must serve as a reminder that girls, young women, and mothers were equally in the forefront of bringing about the independence, freedom and democracy we enjoy to this day. Hence, I challenge you the young women for economic development, and indeed the youth of our country in general, to draw inspiration from that rich heritage. It is incumbent upon you in this generation to make selfless sacrifices and to work harder towards improving the standard and quality of life of our families, communities and the nation as a whole. Back then, during the days of the protracted liberation struggle, we had to use guns to achieve our national objective and vision for a free Zimbabwe. Now, you as the current generation merely have to deploy your creativity, ingenuity, skills, focus and hard work as well as your vote, of course, to realize the Zimbabwe we all want. Doc President Nangagwa said there is an intricate link between women, youth and sustainable economic development, hence the importance of their inclusion. Young people must therefore identify business opportunities towards sustainable and inclusive development across all sectors of the economy. In agriculture, 
women constitute the backbone of the sector. I challenge our young farmers, particularly women, to vigorously explore the production of high-value export crops. In this regard, our agriculture ministry and institutions such as Zimtrade are directed to deliberately draw up programs to assist. More young women must also set up businesses along the agro value chain and food industry subsectors. My government stands ready to bolster your efforts by facilitating access to the requisite means of production. Similarly, the Second Republic under my watch is unwavering in its commitment to enable the active participation of women across all sectors of the economy. To date, programs are ongoing towards developing skilled, innovative, artisanal and engineering-orientated young people who must vault our country's modernization and industrialization agenda. The resuscitation of the apprenticeship program together with the modernization of our vocational training centers will see the training of more technicians and artisans. Young women in both rural and urban areas will not be left behind in these initiatives. Dot President Nangagwa said no sector is a no-go area for women who constitute the biggest population in the country. Industrialists and government stakeholders are exhorted to support the establishment of businesses in the manufacturing sector by more young women and the youth in general. The innovation hubs, incubation centers and industrial parks in our institutions of higher learning remain available for the talented and entrepreneurial young people to develop their ideas into concrete goods and products. Meanwhile, I want to commend women for breaking the glass ceiling with regards to previously male-dominated sectors. In this respect, the ongoing modernization and construction of key national infrastructure, along with the boom in housing construction, also present an array of business opportunities for women and youths in the construction industry. Following a meeting, I held with a group of young women in the construction sector, a program is being developed to ensure that young women in the construction industry receive appropriate mentorship from big construction companies which have been awarded tenders. I, therefore, call upon you as women and the youth to establish companies and earn your share in the design, construction, repair, and maintenance of our national infrastructure," the president said. In the development of Zimbabwe, he said, there is no place for the PhD, pull him or her down, syndrome, violence or any form of negativism. The convention was held under the theme, investing in enterprises led by young women towards Vision 2030.